all right so up till now we have seen the equilibrium in the money market how the equilibrium in the money market was arrived at it was really really simple in today's lecture we will be talking about the islm model but why on earth do we need to talk about such a difficult thing the name of which is a little scary all right we already are having such a simplified model we are in we have arrived at the equilibrium level of interest rate simply by the intersection of money demand and money supply and if we have gotten the equilibrium level of interest rate we can get to investment and then we can get to aggregate demand and then onwards to equilibrium level of income in the economy all right this is really really simple then why do we need to complicate things okay we'll be get on to that now but just a quick disclaimer two three things i would like to clarify number one just for the sake of understanding these concepts i might be using certain words which otherwise are not so academically correct for example income on bond now ideally you should be return on bond or interest on bond but just to make things easier to understand we have to use certain words interchangeably so please do not fret too much about this this is just to understand the things this is no way gonna be somehow we can directly write in the answers in the examination hall after watching these videos one has to read the frayan in order to get hold over the academic terminology that we can write in the answers all right second point is this that i really am assuming and it must be the case that we already have a complete hold over whatever has been taught up till now so why exactly is the money demand curve downward sloping why exactly we are having an inverse relation between the speculative balance or the speculative demand of money and the rate of interest what is the in a uh, relation between the bond price and the interest rate or bond yield and the bond prices this two should be very very obvious to us this should be at the tips of our finger and i really am proceeding forward by assuming that we already know what all these things are and if you do not know then for the first and last time i am requesting you to please watch the videos that i have made up till now and do not start watching this abruptly it will be totally meaningless so all right i think this much is enough these are the only things that we have to keep in mind before watching this very video lecture so all right let's begin so we have studied the equilibrium how we arrived at the equilibrium in the money market very very simple intersection of money demand money supply we got the equilibrium nothing confusing here and through this we can also get a hold over we can also get to know the equilibrium level of income in the economy then why do we need islm model number 1 here we are simply assuming that we already know the level of income in the economy if you look at this diagram carefully then at which position the money demand curve going to be it is decided at the it is decided by the level of income in the economy which we are assuming that we already know but how do we know the level of income in the economy there is no way we can know of it before getting to know of the rate of interest because ultimately rate of interest will determine the investment demand in the economy and then investment would be part of the aggregate demand and further aggregate demand and aggregate supply in section will determine the equilibrium level of income in the economy so if equilibrium level of income is to be determined by the interest rate then how can we get to know of the money demand curve position based on the income that we haven't yet determined right this is point number 1 second of all is this here we have seen that if money supply increases it the curves going to shift rightwards all right and then because money supply is more than the money demand and that's how interest rate going to go down now one thing i that i absolutely do not like is that simply explaining the diagram so anybody can see that if money supply is going up or increasing then as per the diagram intersection of money supply and money demand curve will lead to a lower rate of interest but why now this why part is very very important in all the diagrams but because i have already explained this why part so i really am not going to explain it here but in future diagrams that we'll be looking at definitely we'll be explaining the why part also but here just as to not unnecessarily lengthen the video i am not repeating it again because i have already explained it all i am trying to say is that while writing your answers please do not write the obvious things that uh, 
you have made the diagram now you are writing that money supply is going up and uh, that's how interest rate is going down this is something that anybody can see you have to explain the why part here all right further all right so as we have seen money supply goes up money demand is there interest rate comes down and if interest rate is going down then that also means that investment level in the economy we go will go up and that's how the aggregate income in the aggregate demand in the economy will go up and that's how equilibrium level of income in the economy will go up so this is really possible there is a probability that this money demand curve will shift rightwards because i have already explained that the position of money demand function or money demand curve is based on the level of income in the economy which at present case is y0 but if interest rate has fallen it simply means that equilibrium level of income in the economy can go up and if it goes up then definitely money demand curve can also go up based on the level of income so this is a probability that the new equilibrium will definitely be at the original level of rate of interest money supply badh gaya to interest rate kam ho gaya but isse income equilibrium level of income bhi to zyada ho sakti hai agar इनकम ज़्यादा हो जाएगा तो मनी डिमांड भी राइट वर्ड शिफ्ट होगा और अगर मनी डिमांड राइट वर्ड शिफ्ट होता है तो रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट जो ओरिजिनली था वही रहेगा तो ऐसा तो कुछ भी चेंज नहीं हुआ इकोनॉमी में राइट सो दिस इज़ अ ड्रॉबैक ऑफ द मॉडल दैट वी हैव स्टडीड अप टिल नाउ द कीन्जियन मॉडल पर्टिकुलरली सो कीन्स विटनेस दिस इंटायर मनी मार्केट इक्लेबरियम इन आइसोलेशन Keen simply assumed that money demand and money supply are going to determine the rate of interest, and that is it. But in real economy, we know that these things are quite interdependent, and this is the very reason we need to have a look at the model we are in. We can get to know of the rate of interest and the income, which make the goods market as well as the money market simultaneously in equilibrium. All right, this is a lot of explanation. I would say just because. again there is asymmetric information so if you are new into the preparation then i believe explanation is needed so that was the only reason behind unnecessarily explaining this much but um, all right let's just get on to the islm model now all right so now we are to talk about the is and lm model first thing first the lm schedule what is it l means demand for money and m means supply of money and that's how we are calling it lm schedule schedule means a schedule simple all right so what is money demand it's a function of income and rate of interest and this is a linear money demand function and i have already explained this in depth in length i really am not going to explain it again all right so we know money demand is there because of transaction purpose because of speculative pur purpose and uh, precautionary purpose we are clubbing it with the transaction only so broadly we got two things here money is demanded for a transaction purpose that is to carry out transactions to buy goods and services which is directly related to the level of income in the economy so the more the income you have more you would be into buying goods and services more you would be into carrying out transactions and second of all it is based on the rate of interest but again we have already talked about the demand purpose of the money or the money demand per se so let's just stick to the new thing now all right so we have to derive an lm schedule here this is a new thing how can we derive this very schedule which is at the left side of our screen no it's a right side so which is at the right side of our screen all right so we are, here we have the very simple diagram which we have already looked at first of all money supply exogenous is determined by the central bank then we have money demand so first money demand curve is this one this one position of which is fixed by the level of income in the economy which is y0 so if y0 is the level of income in the economy then md would be our money demand curve and money supply money demand curve intersection is determining the rate of interest r0 and we are simply plotting the r0 and y0 into this very diagram here so if the level of income is y0 rate of interest is r0 then we got point a here that is it now let's assume that level of income in the economy has gone up from y0 to y1 so what would happen 
as we can see clearly in this very diagram when level of income goes up new equilibrium would be at point b where in the rate of interest has gone up from r0 to r1 now we simply need to plot this thing at this very diagram r1 stays here income is y0 and that's how we get the point b and if we join the point a and point b we'll be having an upward sloping lm schedule all right now here we haven't yet understood anything anybody can look at this diagram and state that money demand has gone up and that's how rate of interest had gone up but why as i've already stated why part is very very important and while writing answer do not just write that money demand has gone up and interest rate has gone up and that's how we got upward sloping lm schedule curve no because money demand has gone up because of the increase in the level of income so what would happen increase in level of income means increase in the transaction balance because we know money demand comprises of two components transaction plus speculative higher the level of income higher will be the transaction balance that's it so if the level of income has gone up from y0 to y1 we are seeing increased money demand because of increased transaction balance demand but the level of money supply in the economy has not changed so effectively what has happened money demand is more than the money supply so what would happen how can we bring back the equilibrium in the economy only way we can bring it back is by reducing the speculative balance so effectively money demand has two components transaction plus speculative transaction balance has gone up we need to lower the speculative balance this is the only logical way by which we can again make sure that money demand is equal to the money supply because money supply has not changed right so why exactly rate of interest would go up because if rate of interest goes up then speculative balance would go down why would it go down we should be knowing this but just i am explaining it again because of we should be explaining it even if we know it already that is the only logical answer here so if the rate of interest has gone up why would speculative balance be coming down because people would be parting off with the liquidity why any rational human being be not buying bonds why any rational person be not investing that very money into bonds and why would that person be keeping it in the idle format when the rate of interest has gone up right because money gives us no income so rational human being would part off with liquidity when interest rate has gone up because rate of interest is an income onto the bonds higher the rate of interest higher the income onto the bonds and income on money is nil is absolutely zero so if the rate of interest has gone up the speculative balance would come down so the demand for liquidity to be held in the for the speculative purpose would come down just because human beings are rational they would be investing that very money to buy something that is giving them income which in particular this particular case is the bond which is giving us the rate of interest that's it so long story short when rate of in when income goes up transaction balance goes up money demand exceeds money supply this puts upward pressure on rate of interest and when this happen the speculative balance comes down because people are parting off with the liquidity people are spending that very money to buy bonds and this is how the money demand again comes down and this is how we see again money demand becoming equal to the money supply and that is it so again it's a request while writing your answer write little bit about this analysis as well diagram ko mat explain kariyega koi bhi picture dekh ke bol sakta hai ki money demand badh gaya to rate of interest badh gayi we just have to explain why aur itna lamba chauda likhne ka bhi zarurat nahi hai a two three lines would suffice that when rate of interest goes up speculative balance comes down and that's how again the money market would be the equilibrium that's it itna sab maine bola just to make sure that everybody we all of you would be able to understand it because some of you would be new to the preparation that's it all right so we have seen this thing now let's get on to the second point second point as such is nothing here all we have seen is the derivation of lm schedule which is really really simple all right so that's it it has turned out to be a 15 minute video already and we have studied only one thing right now that is the derivation of lm schedule and it's really really important do not mug up anything be very thorough with the concept we should be very very 
thorough with each and every point here the problem is we have to keep in mind the exam we are preparing for if anybody of any one of you writing any college exam then it's really simple right explain the theory explain the icelm version explain the keynesian model that's it that is it, really it but in case of upsc optional exam the problem is that upsc asked us a very complicated question an application sort of question application based question they were simply i mean if we get lucky then definitely this too can be asked that explain the theory but largely they would be giving us certain situations what if this happened then we really need to be very very thorough with all the concepts okay so that is the only reason why i ended up explaining this in a very very greater depth and length otherwise it's really simple all we have seen is the derivation of lm schedule that's it so that is it tomorrow we'll be talking about so let's just make sure that we have derived the lm here all right so r0 is there and y0 is there that's how we got point number a and further when income goes up R one is our new point, and income is Y one. We got point B. Let's say income again goes, again goes up, and that's how we'll be having a new money demand curve, and another equilibrium point would be C. So joining A, B, and C, we get the LM schedule, LM curve, and that's how we can see it's a positive slope, it's upward sloping. That simply means all the points we are in the money market is in equilibrium so it is showing the rate of interest and level of income in which money market is in equilibrium that's it this is what's written here the lm schedule shows the combination of income and the interest rate that equilibrate the money market and that is it why exactly is it upward sloping because at a high level of income transaction money demand goes up so money demand exceeds money supply this puts an upward pressure on the rate of interest and that makes speculative balance comes down and this is how equilibrium in the money market is re established that is it all right so we have seen absolutely nothing is just the derivation of lm schedule but again it's really really important that we are thorough with it this too is important after that only we'll be able to understand why exactly the slope of the lm schedule is like this is it flatter is it steeper and if it's flatter why is it so and if it's steeper why is it so application we'll be able to handle very very easily if we know its derivation and that is it so tomorrow we'll be talking about the slope of the lm schedule thank you so much for watching and goodbye